Okay, this is a quiz. Um, I actually have two versions. I'm going to go over both versions of them for lab, and I'm going to explain the lab too. But let's look at the quiz first. So the quiz says, be sure to clearly show your work. I'm going to do that. Uh, put your name. I'm going to put my name there. There, that's me. Okay, so you have a cart with a fan that exerts constant strength force. And on it, you collect values for the acceleration as you would put as you put different masses, the total mass, that is, on it. With that, you can create the following data points. So this is acceleration, and this is one over mass. So we're changing the mass. We have a constant strength force. And so I, this is about Newton's second law. Okay, so let's just be clear. This one actually doesn't deal with the lab as much as the second one does. So I'll actually explain this one. So what force is on the cart? Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let's draw a picture first. So imagine that I have my cart like this. And then here's my fan. And the fan exerts some constant force. I'm going to just write it as F uh, net, because that's the, that's the net force. There is a downward gravitational force, and it's also a force from the table. But the net force is just going to be from the fan. So that's that. And then I can say Newton's second law says F net is equal to MA. So what I'm going to do is change the mass and measure the acceleration. Always keep that constant. So what could I plot? I can't plot. F versus M because F is constant. I can't plot F versus A because F is constant. So instead, I want to get uh, A and M on different sides of the equation. So right here, I have A on the vertical axis. So let's solve this for A. So I can say A equals 1. Actually, I'm going to write it like this. A equals F net times 1 over M. See, if I divide both sides by M, I get this equation. Now, that is like Y equals mx plus b. That's the equation of a straight line. So in that equation, that's my a, right? We already know that because it's plotted right there. 1 over m, that's my x. So the slope of this line will be the net force. And the intercept should be close to 0, but it's not. It doesn't really matter. So let's find the slope of this line. Now, <clears throat> to find the slope of a line, we're going to uh, find a best fit line. So th these are pretty good data points, so it's not too hard. Uh, I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to put it close to as many of the points as possible. Actually, I don't think I put any error in here, so that's nice. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to pick points on the line that I drew to find the slope. So I hate to pick this one because it's a point right there, but I'm going to pick. See, this one crosses those two lines, so it's really nice. Uh, normally, it wouldn't pick it if it's a data point, but it is. So let's look at another one further away. Um, I'm going to approximate this one right here. How about that? Okay. So now I'm going to say the slope is the change. I'm going to write it as delta A over delta 1 over M, right? It's a change in this divided by the change in that. So that's going to be my acceleration values. So now I'm going to need to estimate. So that's 1.15. That's 1.2. So this would be uh, there's 5, 0.05 units between here. So let's say this is 1.19. So 1.19. It, it doesn't matter. Trust me, you can be off by a little bit and you'll still get a really good answer because you picked these data points so far apart. Minus the acceleration down here. I'm going to leave the units off. Minus the acceleration down here, which is 1. And then divide by the change in the 1 over m. So this is going to have a value of 3. 3. Oh, it's actually a little bit less than that. So let's say 2.99, just to be fair. And then this has a value of 2.5. And that's going to be my slope. And that slope is my net force. So let's calculate that slope. I'm going to put the calculator where you can see it. OK. So I'm actually using a calculator. I hate calculators. So I'm going to put this as uh, parentheses 1.19 minus 1, which I could have done in my head, I know. But divided by parentheses 2.99 minus 2.5. Again, could have done that in my head. And I get a force of 0.39. Let's say F, this is 0 0.39. Let me just show you that that is indeed Newton's. Okay. So if the acceleration, this is going to be uh, slope, has the units of uh, acceleration meters per second squared. I'll draw it like this, meters per second squared. And then I'm going to divide by... Uh, the units for this, which is 1 over kilograms. So it's going to be 1 over kilograms. So I get kilogram meter per second squared, and that is a, a Newton. 
So this does give me units of Newton. That's always a great thing to see that it does it. But here's a great example of, I'm just applying Newton's second law. This is an experiment we did not do in class uh, because it was harder to get a net for a constant force. Um, we did the Atwood's machine. The, if I had fans at work, the fans were kind of not too great. Then the net force uh, wasn't, didn't really work. But I would like to do that experiment. This is a fun one. And I like it because you can't plot uh, mass versus acceleration. If I plot mass versus acceleration, it's not a linear function. They're not linear related. I got to get it in that form to get it to work out. Okay, let's look at the second version of the quiz. Now this one is with a half Atwood machine. You have a half Atwood machine, horizontal carp, zero friction, cart of mass M1 on the track connected to a, spring, a string that runs over pulley down to mass two. When released, the cart has an acceleration A. The student measures the acceleration, uh, then moves the mass from M1 to M2 and gets the following data. Okay, so let's, let, let me really quickly derive the simple version of this half Atwood machine. So here I have uh, a table here I have a cart, and then I have a string going to a pulley, and then a mass over here. And I called that M1 and this M2. So what the trick, there's a, there's a complicated way to do this problem, uh, but I'm going to do the easy way. And that's to say, because I want to get to this, I want to say F net equals MA in one dimension. And this technically moves in two dimensions. I get that. Uh, so in this experiment, the nice thing about this machine, this half outward machine, is that I can say the system is the two carts together. So it's going to be M1 plus M2. So what forces act on the system? Yes, there is a downward gravitational force on M1, but there's also a force on the track on M1. And those two forces cancel to make the net acceleration in the, in the y direction zero. Uh, there's also a tension, I'll call it N, M1G, those are vectors technically, a tension like that. But this one also has a tension on it this way. And those have the same magnitude technically. Uh, there is a little trick here because there's an external force in here, I lied. But, um, <clears throat> I feel bad now. But, trust me, it all works out. Um, I just thought of that net force on that thing. Huh, okay. Uh, so, that leaves just this mass over here, which has a downward gravitational force, M2G. So, but these two forces kind of cancel. So, G. So that means if I have the system of M1 plus M2, the only force on it is that. So my net force, F net, is going to be M2G, whatever mass is hanging down there. And that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. But I need my total mass, right? M1 plus M2. Time. They're both accelerating. So that's the mass that has a gravitational force and makes the net force, but both of these masses accelerate, so I have to say M1 plus M2 for A. So I get this equation. Okay, that's my half Atwood machine equation. There's another way to get that, but I didn't want to get into it. Okay. I'm still thinking about that other problem. It's kind of cool. Okay, so the question says, uh, what is the total mass of the uh, the cart plus hanger, M1 plus M2 in this situation. So let me put down my equation. I had M2G equals M1 plus M2A. And so here I'm plotting M2G on the horizontal axis. And this is A on the vertical axis. And so I want it in the form of Y equals MX plus B. But I don't have that, right? I actually am plotting... Uh, the acceleration right here on the vertical axis. So I know it's a little trick, but you know it's something that we can practice. So I can solve this for A. Let's solve this for A to get it in this form. So if I divide both sides by M1 plus M2, I get A equals one over M1 plus M2 times M2G. Now I have this is my Y, this is my X, and this is my slope. Okay, so we need to find the slope of that line and then we'll set that equal to 1 over M1 plus M2. So again, taking my ruler and I think these data points are pretty good. So I don't really need to try too hard to get a best fit line. And don't be careful. Don't just take one data point and plug it in. On a midterm or something like that, a lot of times I'd make it so the intercept's not zero so that wouldn't work. Not to be mean, just to kind of help you learn. 
Okay, so again, I'm looking for points that are easy to find, and I don't really have any great ones here. Um, so let's just go with uh, this. Yeah, and this. So I'm going to say the slope is going to be the change in the vertical minus the change in, divided by the change in the horizontal. So that's going to be this value. The vertical value for that is going to be equal to 3.5. I'm going to leave off the units again, minus this value. So now that one's a little bit greater than 1. Let's say it's uh, 1.05. Again, if, if you show your numbers and you put 1.1, you know, I would say, I don't think that's the best choice, but I'm not going to, I would never count off for that. Okay. That's your estimation. It's fine. Um, now I'm going to divide by, I'm sorry, that's 1. That's my vertical value. Now I'm going to, see, I've already made a mistake. So now I'm going to divide by this horizontal value, which is going to be 3 point, it's a little less than halfway, which would be 3.75. So let's say 3 point, I'm going to say 3.6, minus this value, which is 1.05. Okay, again, doing that on my calculator, I get the slope clear, uh, parentheses 3.5 minus 1, I could have done that in my head, divided by parentheses 3.6 minus 1.05. Five, could have done that in my head, equals, uh, and that is 0 0.98. And that has units of, let's just check the units, it's going to be equal to uh, the acceleration in meters per second squared divided by this uh, newtons, which is a kilogram meter per second squared, you remember, so it's going to be kilograms divided by a kilogram meter per second squared. So the meters cancel and the second squared cancel and I get one over kilograms for the units, which tells me that's not the mass. Okay, so the mass, then you can't see that. The mass is gonna be one over the slope. And so it's gonna be one over, uh, what did I say it was? A 0 0.98, one over kilograms. So let's put that uh, one divided by 0.98 equals, and I get 1.02, 1.02 kilograms. Now, does that make sense? Is that a reasonable number? Yeah, I mean, the cart, if you've done this experiment, the cart is like 250, kilo, uh, 250 grams or 0.25 kilograms, and each one of those bars is 500 grams. So I can easily get up to a kilogram for the whole thing. Uh, but that's your answer here. Again, both of these problems had a slight trick to it, and I apologize for that, but I do want you to practice doing these uh, harder problems because they're, you know, they're, if you really understand what we're trying to do with the graph, then it's not so bad. Always think about this, y equals mx plus b. And if I get it in that form, then the slope is whatever is in front of the horizontal variable. Okay. I hope that helps.